This is Smart Investing with Mike Rand. Look, the problem isn't us. We're awesome. Securities and advisory service offered through KMS Financial Services. This is Smart Investing with Michael J. Rand. You guys like a big old soft teddy bear. The zinc name around the office is Softy Pants McHuggable. With Michael's producer, Chris Martin. Last I heard, he was a clown at children's birthday parties. Well, what's wrong with that? He wasn't invited to them. This show is live. This show is live. And call-ins are wel- welcome. And call-ins are welcome. Or you can email us your questions. Go to smartinvesting. smartinvestingshow.com to see how. For I have the pride, the privilege, nay, the pleasure of introducing to you the one, the only. This is Smart Investing with Mike Rand. Well, good morning, Spokane. How are we doing out there? You have tuned in to Smart Investing, your investment show where we try to take the topic of investing, make it easier to understand. We try to get you good, relevant information on each and every show. And thirdly, boom, we try to be entertaining. And with that is my producer on my right with the Captain America t-shirt on, Mr. Chris Martin. How's it going, Chris? And my long sleeve Captain America shirt. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ooh, it's like winter out there. Yeah, Aunt B. It I is was in a little shorts bit. Two days ago. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just go start calling you Nana when the when the temperature is just a little bit cooler. Drive me to breakfast when we're done. <laughs> How are you doing, Nana Martin? <laughs> I'm gonna come in here. I'm, I'm videotaping the show, and I, I should just come in with a shawl next time. And, <laughs> Yeah, or a poncho. Now that they've legalized oh. pot, I think that you should. Nice poncho. Or they're trying to. You know, I have ponchos. They're just no, blankets with no, holes oh. in them. That's all. I just don't sew them up. So. Or a snuggie. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, that's a marketing genius thing. You know, I had this robe, and one time I accidentally put it on backwards, and thought I got a blanket. I'll make a million, and he did. <laughs> Anyway, everybody, this is your investment show where, yeah, we try to take this topic of investing and make it easier to for you to understand. And the point is, is to get you good, relevant information. Now, me being an investor, it is very, very easy for me to go completely nerd on you at eight o'clock on a Saturday morning and just just traipse in to start to talk about individual companies. OK, and what I like and what I don't like. But as much as I like that, I have to always take myself through spring training, in other words, yank myself back and and remind you, the listener, that truly the biggest risk that you have to investing is your own behavior, okay? Even with is what I think is poor as the advice is that comes from my industry a lot of the time, I still think that that it's... uh, that the biggest uh, you took out one of my channels there you go the the biggest deal is is that you need to remember that your investment behavior is what matters most to you when you're investing okay in other words people try to second guess themselves and things like that and it really really messes up with the investment ter- returns Case in point, let me give you the contact information for the show unless you want to, uh, in case you want to call in, then I'll get right into it. Uh, it is a call-in show, so you can call in with a question or a comment, anything that you have. Telephone number here live to the studio is 509-241-5900. You can find us on the web at smartinvestingshow.com. And then you can go, you can stream us on what, iHeartRadio and it's Heart an app Radio. Yep. That, that you get. Okay. You can download on your smartphone, or you can go to you know, smartinvestingshow.com or 590KQNT and find the streaming. Okay. Or everywhere. Okay. This is actually, uh, this idea for me to talk about this has kind of been on the back of my mind. And then we had a radio show caller last week, remembered that they were a client, and they said, hey, we've done well in a year. When do you think about taking profits? And I answered the question in my own Mike Wren way, but uh, but I just I just basically answered the question and said this and this and this is what I usually do, the thought process that goes through when I start thinking about taking profits. Let me tell you firstly that before before somebody like me thinks about taking profits, I just don't look at somebody's portfolio and say, oh, big gain, we need to trim that flower. It's nothing like that. It happens the other way. 
where if you think about it, I'm continuously every week putting portfolios together for prospects and clients. These portfolios are typically groups of companies that I'll be purchasing for them. There comes a point when some of the companies on these uh, portfolios change. Sometimes they change because one of the companies has gone up enough in value that I don't wish to buy it anymore. That's the first step. Okay, it's not a, it's not a fact of me just saying, "Oh, we made money. We need to take that." It it's more thoughtful than that. It's where I am always consistently putting portfolios together for people and the first the first I guess we could call it a red flag or a green flag in in terms of making money is that a company has gone up in value to where hmm I start wincing when I put in a portfolio then I start not putting it in the new portfolios then I start really doing some in-depth research because it it follows logically that if I think a company is high enough in price that I don't wish to buy anymore you have to think it through and you think well hmm maybe I should start selling some of those shares if I think the price is so high that I don't wish to buy anymore right now. And there is a gray area where you're holding a company like that, kind of waiting to see how the business pans out. And that's it's normal. It's what happens when you own a company. But the, the thing that got me is, is that emotionally, most investors now think that they've had it too good for too long of a period of time. And so they're looking for when is the next shoe going to drop? When's the market going to go down a little bit again where I can buy stuff maybe on the cheap? It's gone up enough in a short amount of time that I'm worried about giving away profits and on and on and on. This is still an echo emotional boom from what happened in 2000 and in 2008. There are professional money managers that are still licking their wounds and are shell-shocked of what's happened this last decade. So let me firmly assert to you, the listener, that this decade that started in the year 2000 has had below-average performance for pretty much the entire decade. We had a really, really big correction in 2008, and we've recovered from that correction, and now... We're just a couple hundred points above where the all-time high of the market was so many years ago. So the thing is, is that you we you have gone through a period of 10 years of bad performance. Now you've gone through a period of a couple three years where you've had good performance, and you're thinking the and you're thinking the party's over already. You're too hard on yourself, too strict, and maybe a little bit too negative. And when we, uh, but that's what humans do well, exactly. Especially ones that you know, special organized religion has a lot to do with that. You know, a lot of uh, what is that guilt or something? (laughs) That's marriage too. (laughs) (laughs) So anyway, being a husband. Yeah, I think just being human. It doesn't have anything else other than to do with that. So anyway, when we come back from the break, I'm going to go into a little bit more in detail to why you should rest a little bit easier than you are now with the good returns that you hopefully see in your portfolios. And if you don't have good returns in your portfolios, well, I imagine you can figure out what I would tell you to do. I'm Mike Wren. It's the show Smart Investing. You're listening live on 590 KQNT. You can find us on the web at smartinvestingshow.com. And if you care, you can give us a call here live to the studio. 509-241-5900. We'll be right back. Any opinions expressed here are given in good faith and are subject to change without notice and are correct only on the stated date of issue. Past performance is not always indicative of future results. This material is not intended as an offer or solicitation for the purchase or sale of any security or other financial instrument. Security financial instruments or strategies mentioned may not be suitable for all investors. Prices, values, or income from any investment mentioned in this report may fall against the interest of the investor and the investor may get back less than the amount invested. This material does not take into account your particular investment objectives, financial situation, or needs and is not intended as a recommendation of particular securities, financial instruments, or strategies to you. Before acting on any recommendation on this material, you should consider whether it is suitable for your particular circumstances and, if necessary, seek professional advice. This is Smart Investing with Michael J. Wren. I think his good looks have actually held him back. With Michael's producer, Chris Martin. This guy is great. I don't care if he's some junkie war criminal pimp. I am not going to change my mind. 
Hey, good morning, everybody. We're back with Smart Investing. I'm Mike Wren, your host. Telephone number here to the studio is 509-241-5900. Now, I understand you, the person out there, a little bit skittish about the investments because 2008 was a big shaker because the housing market collapsed and your 401k and your investments collapsed. I get it. And think about this, too, is people that weren't investing heard about all the problems yeah. that other people were having. So it even scared people who weren't even investing at the time. Exactly. Just like the Great Depression. where most And I've, I've mentioned on the radio before that the people that actually invest, it's a very, very small subset of the population, not only of the United States, but of the world. So that's why it's very, very important to get your bills paid off before you invest because you're dealing with, you know, you're in a rarefied area anyway. So yeah. you want to want to give yourself the best chance possible. But here we go. Uh, this I love this guy's name because it's an easy name to hate. Muhammad <laughs> El Arian. He is the head of PIMCO's financial arm. Uh, here we have a, the third headline on Yahoo Finance today, CNBC as well. And he is saying that... Cyprus rescue goes from bad to worse. Here's a guy that's so negative that he has to pick on the one island that they're not doing. And I know, yeah, oh, yeah, what happens in Cyprus could happen in uh, Portugal, which could happen in Italy. I probably know it better from my travels than most people do. But I also know the likelihood of that spreading because you have, if you know where Cyprus is, there's no economy there, okay? It's an island. It's a tourist economy. Most of the tourists that go to Cyprus are Russian. It's well known, okay? It's a it's a Russian tourist destination, just like Mexico and Hawaii are American and North American tour uh, uh, tourist destinations, or maybe like Belize or something in the you know South America or Central America, whatever we want to call it. Okay. My vacations are Seattle, so uh, right. I'll take your word for it. Uh, so anyway, they're, we're make, they're making a big deal, and what I'm trying to fig, what I'm trying to get at is, is this Muhammad El Aryan. It's been two years or longer since I've heard this man utter a positive word, and he is the CEO of Pimco, where they manage 1.8 trillion, and I just don't get it. So the only thing that I can think of is he's just a negative, negative, negative Nelly, or that CNBC and everybody else, they kind of script the news and they want him to be negative. I don't know which it is. So well, I don't, I don't we've know. We've talked about that yeah. a ton before. Negative news that sells more. So anyway, here's, here's what I'm trying to get at. Is that I've been telling my clients and I've even told, I think I might, let a, I might have let it slip a year or so ago on this radio show. That when we were at 10, 11, 12,000 on the Dow, which wasn't all that long ago. I was telling people, listen, 15500 on the Dow is easy money. That just means that the Dow is finally getting some performance where it's called in nerd terms regression to the mean, which means that the average for the 90s was higher than the, than the 200-year average of stock markets. The average for 2000 to 2010 was way below the average for the last couple hundred years of investing markets. So we have some catching up to do to make it just to the average. And if you look at charts, if you look at, uh, if you look at data for 200 years of the stock market, it almost never gives you that 8, 9, 10% average annualized return. It's either shooting above it or it's shooting below it, and we end up averaging it out. And it's very easy to see that the last part of the – well, 1982 onward was pretty good. So you you basically have the 80s were good in the market. You got beat up in 1987, but it was literally severe and over within a month. Then you have 1990, which was the Gulf War, which just kind of slowed stuff up a little bit. And then, boom, you're off to the races for the 2000s, you know, for the 90s. So you've got the better part of two decades that were extremely good to be an investor in individual companies. 
than you have from 2000 to 2010, 11, not so good. And now all of a sudden things are starting to get better again. To me, it makes just absolute sense, just like the weather and the seasons changing. Really, really nothing more than that, you know, but everybody else is trying to read a little bit too much into it. And most of these folks are going to be surprised by the positive performances from the investments out there. The the group of people that are continually negative and continually throwing rocks at whatever that they can find, the group of those people is getting a little bit smaller and a little bit more aggressive in their rock throwing so that they can be heard. They're getting to be a smaller group, so they tend to cry wolf even louder than they did maybe two years ago. My point is this. 15,000 on the Dow is a foregone conclusion. 15,500 on the Dow is absolutely a foregone conclusion. It's been very, very easy money for the people that have been investing since the low in 2008 until now for them to make money because all they needed to do was have a positive outlook on the future. That's it. They just thought that the world wasn't going to end, and why not? Okay? But that's a big thing to ask people. Apparently. You know. Yeah. Well, you know, say you're walking down the street and you see some guy and one day gives you a flower. And then the next day, guy, he punches you in the face. It's well, the same the next guy? Day, yeah. And then the next day gives you a flower and the next day gives you a flower. And the next day he punches you in the face. I mean, the positives outweigh the negative because he's, you know, he's giving you something. Hey, that's great. But you always remember those that, well, today's going to be the day he's going to punch me. I think that's the way a lot of people are looking at the stock market is just I've seen the positives. Yeah, whatever. But I've seen the negatives and I'm going to focus on that a little more. You are 100% correct. You really are. With that analogy, you are 100% correct. That's what people... And so what I'm trying to deal with is that man... Here's Let's follow that analogy even further. That man is just the up and down behavior of the market. We skip him and we just own individual companies. We don't focus on what the market, so to speak, is doing. Or, Go to work another way. Yeah. Go around that guy. Yeah. <laughs> and so, and here's the thing is, is that it's not just individual companies. If you have one or two, I said one or two, not 10 or 12, one or two mutual fund managers that you trust, same difference. You just, you concentrate on them. You don't concentrate on what the psychopathic market does because you can't control it. What You can't really control what a company's doing, but you can find very, very specific news as to how they're approaching news in the market. Let's say in the news yesterday or the day before, McDonald's came out and they said that they were, they found that they were giving poor service at certain of their stores. Did you see that in the news? I didn't. No. Okay. It was, they used, they used this interview or they used this data to talk to their franchisees and say, listen, we can't, you know, we've got to make sure we toe the line and give good service. Right. That is not only perfect, that's normal. Customer service at the stores that you go to ebbs and flows. Good, not so good. Good, not so good. Oh, that was a good day. Oh, I had horrible service that day. That's just life. But it's nice to, what I'm trying to get at, it is nice to get that realistic news that a company that's been in business for a long time, that will continue to be in business for a long time, has an issue and they're dealing with it. Rather than stupid, stupid, pants over his head, Muhammad El Aryan, of course he's a CEO because he does nothing, for an investment manager group and he's always negative and talking about Cyprus. Who gives a hell about Cyprus? You know, that's the thing is you want to talk about something that actually matters as to how you're making money. It's like we, it's like we would be talking about some severe thunderstorm on that African continent and how that might affect the weather in Oconomowoc, Wisconsin. Nuts. Okay. Absolutely nuts. So, yeah, that that that's what drives me. So crazy. You're basically you're seeing the difference between a true manager and. And a CEO. <laughs> right. Or, and, and a lot of people know what I'm talking about when exactly. they go to work today. <laughs> so anyway, that's... And now, let me restate that 
to get to fifteen thousand, fifteen thousand five hundred, that's still the easy money because all we are doing is finally getting back to average performances in the market indexes. That means we have the wind at our back when we're investing in a lot of individual companies. All that it takes is to have a positive outlook on the future. When we come back from the break, I will do a little bit of review that not only does a positive outlook on the future steer us to investing that way, but when we look at our other there, they're going to become apparent. And yeah, I'm going to beat up on the gold people. Have you noticed what your price of gold has been doing lately? Uh, falling like a stone? Yeah, falling like a falling like a heavy like a mineral. Piece of gold? Yeah, I mean, that's... Ba-dum. Yeah, so anyway, I, you notice that I predict in another six months, the commercials that you will hear about gold will fall by more than 50% because it's over. I'm Mike Wren. It's the show Smart Investing. You're listening live on 590 KQNT. You can find us on the web at smartinvestingshow.com, and you can call us here to the studio. If you've got a question, comment, 509-241-5900. We'll be right back. This is Smart Investing with Michael J. Wren. He's like a god, only it hurts more when he judges us. With Michael's producer, Chris Martin. I wouldn't have this job if it weren't for the mouth on my back. This is Smart Investing with Michael J. Wren. I dumbed it down because some of the more religious people in town were starting to say I was a witch. With Michael's producer, Chris Martin. You take wonder and complexity and present it in a way that no one can possibly understand. I think I have a new favorite. <laughs> <laughs> up in Pond- I kind of thought you'd like that Up one. in Pondray County, I had to dumb it down because they thought I was starting to be a warlock. <laughs> Chris, where do you find this I, stuff? You are a genius with some of it's this. It's funny because I'll sit there and watch a show and you know, I'll, I'll, <laughs> every now and then I'll hear something. You know, somebody's, so basically somebody's insulting someone and I'll think, oh, that'd make a good sound bite, but... I think it was my wife sitting there going, oh, that sounds like Mike. You got to get that. <laughs> well, hello, everybody. Thanks again for tuning in to Smart Investing. It's uh, nice to be with you. And it's uh, it's a little bit brisk, according to Nana Martin here on my right. But, <laughs> brisk nothing. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, but it's nice outside. It's just wonderful how things are greening up. You know, it's just pretty. We live in a really nice area of the world. Yeah, I am, you know, well, I guess sort of thankful because I have to go outside. But I'm finally, you know, mowing the lawn and getting out. And I mowed the lawn once, yeah. You just, you, you come out, it's like you see people coming out rubbing their eyes. We're all like moles around here when the sun <laughs> finally comes out. It's nice. And then in just a short order, there will be lots of barbecues going on. Oh, I can already smell a couple, yeah. We, we barbecued last oh, night, yeah. didn't we? Yeah. You know, you eat it inside because it's cold <laughs> right. at night. But yeah, yeah, but we you're barbecued still out there outside. barbecuing. Mm -hmm. So anyway, first, since this is an hour show, we spent the first half of the show talking about emotional stuff, which is extremely important. That's why I led with it. It's that you need to have a positive outlook on the future of what you own. So, so you would own it in the first place. And so you would keep owning it. Okay. Here's the next part is that the logical side is, is that, okay, I have a positive outlook on the future, but I want to know my choices. Well, here's your choices. Choice number one is your mattress. Enough said. Choice number two, Folgers coffee can in the backyard. Choice number three, just as profitable as the first two, the bank. Choice number four, maybe a CD at the bank for a few years, two, three years, and I think uh, I could probably get it here on the internet, but it's uh, I'm lazy. So we will just say that CD rates are somewhere around one and a half to two point one percent. Okay, a ten-year Treasury bond. That means if you give your money to the government for ten years, so that means CD rates have to be lower than what I just told you. I think ten-year <laughs> uh, Treasury, giving your money to the government for ten years. What are they going to give you each year for ten years? Like two percent per year or one point seven five? Not very much. A thirty-year Treasury bond. So risk-free rate of return for 30 years, what's that supposed to be? It's supposed to be three, but it's going to be actually under three right now, right around three. So that's it. So those are some of your choices. 
Then you've got corporate bonds out there that are paying you a little bit more interest than that, but you have to be giving your money to a corporation or maybe a municipality for tax-free bonds. They're going to pay you an interest rate maybe of like four, four and a half. Okay? When you're looking at individual companies, I will tell a lot of people out there that if you are a real investor... Uh oh, are you, are you searching around? Oh, did you did you stop something, hearing yourself? Something happened where my uh, uh, where I lost the left channel on my headphones. I was gonna say that's horrible if you can't hear yourself because the rest of us can. There we go. There so we you go. should have to share in that. So anyway, uh, companies. My opinion right now: if you're going to be an investor, there's only one place to invest, and that's by owning good individual companies. If you're trying to diversify away from that, I'm so worried about price degradation in certain other areas that I wouldn't even invest in other areas. I would at least keep it in the bank. I know I'm going to get beat up by inflation, but at least I'm not going to lose principal right off the bat from market fluctuations or interest rate fluctuations. Truly, it's that way right now. Didn't used to be that way nine years ago when we were on the air for the first time. Didn't used to be that way at all. Why is that? Well, you've got companies out there, some of them are debt-free, that pay an interest rate that's similar to what the bank's going to give you. So let's talk about it from the negative point of view. You could put your money in a bank and get 1.5% per year. Or you could put your money into a very, very good telecommunications-type company that also builds the chip architecture for inside the phones. They also have copyrights, patents, and they get royalties from every 3G and 4G device made on the face of the earth. And that company will pay you 1.5% per year. And by the way, that company is debt-free. They don't owe anybody any money. And by the way, not only do you get that 1.5% dividend, you get the possibility of the share price of that company going up because the profitability of that company might be pretty good when they get a royalty off of every 3G and 4G device made. We're talking droid phones, iPads, iPhones. Companies called Qualcomm in San Diego. So me, I would not be putting my money in the bank at 1.5%. I would be more apt to be putting it, at the, uh, putting it in a company like Qualcomm. Now, it's not a solicitation to buy or sell. I'm just telling you what I would do with my own money, Okay. So let's say, well, 1.5%, meh, you know, I would like more of a dividend, okay? More of a dividend, something that's a little bit more conservative. Well, why don't we, why don't we look to something that everybody's familiar with? Um, McDonald's. It's not a solicitation to buy or sell, but McDonald's is pretty ubiquitous the world over. Almost any place that you travel in the world, you're going to find a McDonald's. That's pretty cool. Us being an American, we might not think it's that cool because we're used to so many McDonald's all over that it's like, wow, you want McDonald's? No, not really. Hey, did you hear that McDonald's is coming out with those new coffee drinks? And yeah, yeah, well, there's a McDonald's right here. Why don't we try it? Or, right. or do I'm I, done. Do I feel like McDonald's? Uh, not right now. All right, we'll drive five more miles, and I'll ask you again. Yeah, hey, there's one. Or you know, I feel like a snack. They've got the they used to have or close to the dollar menu. I don't. Oh, they want, still do. Okay, I don't want something huge, but I wouldn't mind one of their little burgers to throw down in two or three I just bites. Feel snacky. Yeah, it just tied me over. <laughs> Let me tell you, that's uniquely American thinking. If you travel outside this country, there isn't that many McDonald's in all of these other cities around the world. They're more sparse. It's more of a destination, okay? And <laughs> I know a tourist I, attraction for the people who live there. <laughs> and you might think McDonald's and destination that's com- that's mutually exclusive, but it's not because in these other parts of the world, they don't have all the food choices that we do. You want a burrito in France? No way. You want a burrito in Russia? No, they're not going to give it to you. You want a hamburger somewhere, just a quick burger. It's not going to happen. So McDonald's in all of these other places in the world is actually a choice for people to eat at that's different than what they usually eat at. For us, 
it's what we usually eat at. <laughs> so what so I'm, basically, if you're in Belgium <laughs> right. and you say, let's go to a McDonald's because it's different. But here we go, hey, let's go to a Belgium restaurant <laughs> because it's different. Right. Got it. But in Belgium, Belgium, you've got Belgian food and a few of the little other companies that have infiltrated, like a Starbucks and a Hagen dazs and a McDonald's, okay? you don't, But you don't have all of these other choices. Fast food doesn't exist in the rest of the world to the degree that we have it here. It's called street food, and people like Anthony Bourdain make a living at eating this awesome street food in all of these other countries, and sometimes it's absolutely rubbish. Like some of the street food in Finland, it's like overboiled hot dogs with you know just different boiled meats with as much ketchup and mustard as you could put on it like ugh. you had me at boiled <laughs> but it's it's like obviously it's for early in the morning when people have been uh let's say uh, celebrating into the evening and they become hungry <laughs> i get it <laughs> hangover breakfast <laughs> right so mcdonald's back to mcdonald's you're thinking you want more of a dividend than one and a half percent And you want something that is more conservative. It's not so techy. I mean, 3G, 4G, digital wireless communications, 4G, LTE, that sounds awfully Star Trek to me. How about we just concentrate on hamburgers? Perfect. Hamburgers. My own daughter, Anna, you like Five Guys, don't you? You're here with me in the studio. Yeah, she loves Five Guys. And we go there, oh, I want a hot dog, Dad. And it's like, okay, hot dog. Took a bite away. It wasn't that bad. McDonald's, yeah, it's good. So McDonald's, though, you can depend on them, and it's a and it's a sustainable business model, and it's a sustainable business model that's worldwide, and that dividend is double Qualcomm's. The dividend that they pay you for owning that company is three percent. Now I know why my headphone was going out as you were messing with the cord. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's little hands were messing with the cord. So anyway. Not only are people outside of the station <laughs> bored of the show, but people inside the station <laughs> there now. <laughs> so McDonald's pays a 3% dividend to you while you wait to probably make some profits as years go by by owning a piece of a very, very profitable food chain that's worldwide. Do you see how that's nice and simple, yes, cut and dry? I do. And it's not a solicitation to buy or sell because I don't know if McDonald's would be appropriate for you or not. But there's just two companies that pay very, very good dividends that you can probably understand their business models that to me makes a heck of a lot of sense. And logically, I don't. I wouldn't go anywhere else. So when we... I'll try to tie these two in together. I, I think that's yeah. important because I know a lot of people that I've asked, you know, you know, well, I'm invested in this, blah, blah, blah. And, well, what do they do? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. That just that's, doesn't seem right to me. It no, just, it's not. But, you know, yeah, McDonald's I can understand. Coke I can understand. But, yeah, I've heard a lot of technical businesses, and they're like, I don't know. They make computers or something. It's And that's very, very wrong. People think that sometimes investing is more like gambling and it should be all sexy and exciting. Yeah, it should, should be, be in high-tech stuff. Yeah, and... that it's the opposite. It should be the opposite. Sometimes ketchup is just pretty darn awesome, and you'll make a lot of money selling really good ketchup. Right. So anyway, I'm Mike Wren. It's the show Smart Investing. You are listening live on 590 KQNT. Telephone number here to the studio. We only have a few minutes left in this one-hour show, but if you do have a question, give us a call. 509 241 5900. We'll be right back. This is Smart Investing with Mike Rand. He's strutting around like he's five foot six. With Michael's producer, Chris Martin. You know how there's crazy cat ladies? Well, he was like that, but with raccoons. <laughs> We're back. We're back with Smart Investing. I'm Mike Rand, your host. Telephone number here to the studio is 509 241 5900. So the first part of the show. I talked about you need to kind of have a little bit of a grasp on math and a little bit of a grasp on reality. Not so much pessimism, no, not so much optimism, but just realistically what's going on. Realistically, what's going on is commerce, business. People haven't bought cars in a long time. They're starting to buy some cars. People haven't spent money on themselves to a degree here and there. They're starting to again. Money is a little, little bit easier for people. And 
I, in terms of dollars, I don't think it's that much different. In terms of perception, I think it's a world of difference. Okay, And that's why the economists are arguing all the time, is some of the economists will let themselves think like an artist, and they can see that there's a difference. Some of the economists that just are black and white and just look at numbers see no difference at all. That's, there's things uh, that things are changing, and they're changing for the better, and it's bound to happen because they were changing for the worse for quite a period of time. Okay, That's just the way a normal business cycle goes. If you're aware of it, it will help insulate you from all of the all of the people that are crying wolf that go on the TV and go on the radio and, and write articles. The other thing that you have to be aware of is that what real investing is. Real investing is owning a piece of a company or the whole thing or pieces of different companies and owning that for the long haul. That's what it is. So if you concentrate on company-specific news, it really weeds out a lot of the BS that really is meaningless to you. And it's not so uh, not so rife with emotion, by the way. When companies are telling you that they earned better than they thought, they're going to tell you why. If the companies are telling you that their earnings are down from what they thought they do, that they would be, they're going to tell you why. They'll probably tell you, and here's why they expect them to turn around, or here's what they're going to do to try to reverse the situation, to try to be more profitable. You actually get more commentary instead of somebody like a Tom Brokaw that knows nothing that's saying that the world is ending. Or, oh, you know, the market shot up 50 points. Shot up 50 points, really. Shot up 50 <laughs> points. That's like, it'd be like a baseball announcer screaming about a double in the exact same tone of voice that they would be screaming about a grand slam home run. The late Dave Niehaus, can you see him screaming about a single as much as a grand salami? No. But that's what CNBC and all of the all of the media do all the time to try to well, get because you to they listen. have to who's yeah. gonna who's gonna go and the market was up 50 points i mean no they gotta you know hey it was up 50 points they you know who's gonna listen to mr monotone and tell the news well i have a feeling though that if you brought somebody back from the 60s the 50s roger mudd walter cronkite if you actually had one of those old news shows that was just, it was more like today, but it w had the tone of the old ones. I think that they would probably end up killing it. I think that they would take, that they would definitely take market share from the others because it would be different. I got to say no. Really? I could, I think we're in it. We're, you and I are old. We're yeah. in a different generation. I mean, you know, my well, kids. It doesn't get matter. Any, anybody younger than you and me hasn't watched the news in their whole entire life. It's, well, yeah. So you that's, know, you do have to remember that. If my that. daughter or something gets news, it's from Twitter or Facebook. Or, right. You know, so, I learned about Jonathan Winters dying on Facebook before I learned it on the regular news channel. So I might be right, though. If we don't have to worry about anybody younger than us and you took one of these news broadcasts and switched it, you know what, though? Do it at like five or six o'clock around dinner time when right. they generally were on. Oh, and no, I, that's what I would yeah. do. I bet a lot, of, yeah, a lot of people, oh, I'm going to sit and, you know, it'd be well, nice to finally go back in time. And well, I'm just thinking about how successful Johnny Carson was and the train of thought on a Johnny Carson show being non-inflammatory. Right. You know, his thesis was make everybody look good, make everybody laugh, talk about stuff that anybody could, you know, look about, have a little bit of funny innuendo, have some funny animals on, and show some new comics. Never, it never like, you know, made fun of no. someone and was mean. And that's no, all you they get. They it. did. Yeah, they but did it to wasn't an extent. A, but yeah. it wasn't as mean. It as, wasn't like yeah. harmful news magazine show. He know? would. He Look would, how much pounds Kim Kardashian put on. Well, geez, you know, she's still a person. I mean. <laughs> he, and he would have that look on his face where he would telegraph it to you that he knew right. that he was teasing somebody. Well, and you were saying, this kind of goes off the rails, but. You were saying, you know, oh, was that Woody Harrelson on the intro? Because mm -hmm. I've been watching old Cheers, and, and I found a Night Court Season 1 DVD <laughs> at Goodwill, you know, yeah. and I've been watching those. And the thing is, is back then, it was adults. 
like acting and and you know it was good it's not like today where i like some of the shows today but they're 20 somethings in wacky situations well, no and they're and, reality tv which is absolutely the opposite of reality and facebook is absolutely the opposite of talking to somebody face to face it's right. weird that way right but and yeah the, we're in a different generation and the reason that i'm the reason that you can consider this investment news is that you have to, it's important to have your emotions correctly categorized and co- and correctly uh, have a correct inventory inside of you it's nice to be aware of the changes happening so you know what changes happening are probably never going to go back to normal and so you know what a little bit of the change out there actually is meaningless and has no value to it and should not Inter, uh, should not uh, have any influence as far as your investment decisions. There's uh, and just think of how much news is available to you in the markets, but how much of it is available to you more that's specific company geared geared to specific companies. The news that's geared to specific companies is up a little bit. Okay, just because they people go a little bit more in depth and there's more people reporting on individual companies, but it's up slightly from what it was 20 years ago. I know because I was doing this 20 years ago, but the news that's available to you that's about some mutual fund, that's about the markets, that's about a whole bunch of the market, it's up many, many times magnitudes more than it used to be and it's absolutely meaningless again don't forget my analogy the stock market is just like pike street market reporting on how busy pike street market is isn't all that informative okay there's commerce being done at pike street market there's sellers and buyers and if you go there to buy something or go there to sell something you're doing you're doing a specific act but the reporting of Pike Street Market was busy today. Pike Street Market wasn't busy today. Pike Street Market, the prices were at this level. Pike Street Market, the prices were at this level. How much does that tell you about the goods and services available for sale on Pike Street? Nothing. It just tells you that you're going to be standing with a lot of people on some days, and some days you're not going to be standing with very many people. And all of that news on the Dow and on the S&P and so on, that's the type of news that it is. It's just... Basically, somebody standing in the middle of the street telling you how busy things are, and it's virtually meaningless and not helpful at all when it comes to true long-term investing and growing your wealth for the future. I'm Mike Wren. It's the show Smart Investing. You've been listening live on 590 KQNT. Thanks for joining us on this Saturday morning. We'll be back again next week, same place, same time. Have a good rest of your weekend. I said it before and I'll say it again. Life moves pretty fast. You don't stop and look around once in a while. You could miss it.